Hi, I'm Tyson Franklin, and welcome to this week's episode of Five Minute Friday. Now, this is pillar number five, which is verbal marketing. Now, I look at verbal marketing as any form of marketing that involves you opening your mouth and communicating with others. It's really a simple definition. If you get nervous meeting people for the first time or talking in front of crowds, don't be concerned. It's normal and you're not alone. It's actually a very, very popular fear. And Mark Twain even said, there are only two types of speakers in the world, the nervous and the liars. And I will still say that I am in the nervous category. However, I've learned not to let my fears control me anymore. That's a, no, that's a whole nother story. So on this podcast episode, I will discuss the most common forms of verbal marketing, which are business lunches and networking events, public speaking opportunities, trade shows and expos, and the elevator speech. So let's talk about the first one. Let's get started. First one is business lunches and networking events. Now, I'm a huge fan of attending well-run business lunches and networking events. And when I say well-run, I mean there's adequate time before, during, and after the event for meaningful conversations, not these really quick conversations where you really don't get any depth. Now, on the surface, the concept of networking is really simple. The goal is to link like-minded individuals who have a common interest together. And through relationship building and trust, they become walking, talking advertisements for one another's business. That's what you're after. But for networking to be effective, you must be genuine and honest and look at networking with a long-term view. You need to build trust with the person you're talking to. Never treat networking as a one-way promotional activity for yourself and for your business. And never, under any circumstances, try and shove your business card down everyone's throat. Don't become that person, the person that everybody sees and tries to avoid in the room. The best part of networking, though, is it's one of the least expensive marketing activities you will undertake, and I believe my previous businesses were all built on the back of business lunches and networking and doing it the right way. So some networking events are free. However, there's others that they do have a small cost, probably $25, $50, or $75, depending if there's a speaker, and it could be a breakfast or there may be a lunch included. Who you know is far more important than what you know. But what's even more important is who knows what you know. That is the key. Most communities will have a chamber of commerce or something very, very similar. But also don't overlook the local business women's club, especially if you're a male, you will stand out. So opportunities for networking are only limited by your thinking. And if there's no networking group in your particular area, just start one. Write to local business people you want to connect with and get one started. It could be before or after work, and it could be held at your favorite coffee shop. If you only have four people attend that first meeting, then that's four more opportunities than you had before creating the networking event. Now, here's a huge tip. If you're the person organizing the new networking group, you initially control who is invited. Therefore, you do not have to invite people that you do not like. Let them find out about the group later on down the track through other means, not through a personal invitation. The second thing I wanted to talk about was public speaking opportunities. Now, my first public speaking engagement was in front of about 10 unfortunate people. And I say unfortunate because it was nothing short of terrible. It was one of the worst things I've ever had the unpleasure of actually being involved in. It was so bad, the person who actually organized the event came up to me and asked me, can you promise to never, ever speak in public again? He said it was that bad. And he wasn't joking. And I'll admit, my confidence was low. But then I realized, you know what, I could only get better. And I did. I went from abysmal to terrible, from terrible to bad, and basically just kept improving from there. If you have a fear of public speaking, as I did, you need to deal with it. Because public speaking opens so many doors that are otherwise closed to you. Joining Toastmasters or a similar group may be able to assist you with public speaking, but for me, I just threw myself in the deep end and decided I needed to sink or swim. Unfortunately, I sank, but I also learned the more I did it, the better I got because everything is hard until it's easy. And always remember that the people you're talking to want to see you succeed. They don't want to see you fail. There are many long-term benefits for doing public speaking. First one is you will come across as a perceived expert. And remember, perception is reality. The second thing, if you're an expert, then the business you own and operate must also be exceptional. The third thing, speaking to groups of people at one time is a great way to leverage your time and promote your business for free. 
And one of the best reasons why you want to say yes to speaking opportunities when they come about is it's one less speaking opportunity for your competitors. Because if you don't do it, they probably will. And you've got to think, are you okay with that? The next thing I want to talk about were trade shows and expos. Now, having a booth at local trade shows provides great opportunity for you to promote your business and the services you provide to large numbers of people in a very short period of time. However, if you have a booth, you've got to make sure it looks professional and you must make sure it's always staffed. There's nothing worse than seeing an empty booth. It does not give a really good image. If you attend a networking event, give a talk or maybe you have a, a booth at an expo, make sure you take photos for your website and for your social media pages. You might even shoot some video. And if what you're doing is newsworthy, consider contacting local media and sending out a media release. Okay, number four is do you have an elevator speech? Now this may sound trivial, but when you're at a networking event, you will be asked, what do you do? And I'm amazed how many people are unprepared for this question. It happens at every event. You only have a brief moment to explain yourself. And if you um and ah, the opportunity may be lost. Therefore, you need to be able to communicate what you do very quickly and you need to practice this technique. You want your elevator speech to create a spark of interest in the other person. You want them saying, please tell me more. That's what an elevator speech is, a concise, short message of who you are and what you do. This doesn't happen very often, but I've been at lunch meetings and the MC will ask if anyone would like to stand up or come on stage for a one or two minute talk briefly about their business. It's at these times when an elevator speech or what I call an extended elevator speech is needed. And what an opportunity to get up and talk about your business in front of like-minded business people. And here's a final tip. This is like a bonus tip to end with. With all verbal marketing, it all comes back to you having the ability to talk and communicate with other people. If you don't have the skill, you need to go and learn it. Otherwise, you're gifting work and your share of the wealth pie to your competition. It's no secret, there's big money in verbal marketing, but you have to overcome your fears. Okay, that's it from me, and I will talk to you again next week. Bye for now.